I hope you enjoy my stories. Instead of just clicking thumbs down, please comment and share how we can do better. If you do like our video then please like and subscribe. Around 40 years ago, I decided to buy a sprawling piece of land, a little over 10,000 acres in a somewhat secluded area. This land was mostly shaped like a large rectangle, but there was this peculiar, irregular chunk on one side. Fast forward to five years ago, a developer expressed interest in my property. However, I only agreed to sell about 500 acres of it, the oddly shaped portion. Despite his initial complaints, he purchased the land and developed a subdivision governed by a mandatory homeowners association. Since I wasn't part of the subdivision, the HOA's rules didn't apply to me, or so I thought. Having lost my wife and with my children all grown up, I moved onto my land permanently a few years before the deal with the developer. I built a small modest house that served all my needs, situated about a mile and a half away from the HOA subdivision. My home is surrounded by forests with a few expansive meadows, one of which my house sits in the middle of. Not long after the establishment of the subdivision, I began receiving letters from the HOA, demanding I sign HOA forms and pay fines for various infractions based on their standards. The color of my house, not maintaining the lawn, although my house is in the middle of a meadow. Having equipment on my property due to my occasional tree logging, and even for using a wood stove in winter and the appearance of my truck. I firmly told them I was not and would never be a part of their HOA, to which they brazenly replied that it didn't matter, I still had to comply with their rules. That's when I let my lawyer handle it. Around the same time, another developer showed interest in expanding the HOA and pressured me to sell more of my land. I refused. Life then took a turn when my mother fell ill and I had to leave my home to care for her which ended up being for a little over a year. Sadly, she passed away, and upon returning home, I was met with a shocking sight. My house was gone, vanished without a trace. To my horror, the HOA had begun constructing houses on my land, demolishing the trees to clear nearly 2,000 acres for their development. It was clear they had boldly started this expansion after I refused to sell more land to the developer, who unsurprisingly lived in the HOA and was part of its board. I immediately contacted them only to be falsely informed that I had sold them my land and would be charged with trespassing if I tried to assert my rights. Without hesitation, I knew it was time for a legal battle. After an arduous legal fight, I succeeded in suing them for the destruction they caused. The developer was found guilty of fabricating documents related to the sale of my land and faced jail time for such massive fraud. The aftermath saw 200 homes illegally built on my property, homes filled with families who were unaware of the HOA's deceitful acts. Even though I had the right to demand the destruction of these homes, I couldn't bear the thought due to the innocent families involved. Ultimately, the developer was rendered bankrupt after being ordered to compensate me for the extensive damages, including the massive loss of my trees. The HOA dissolved, leaving the county to manage the infrastructure, and I reached a settlement with the residents that prohibited the formation of any future HOAs. In the end, I temporarily moved into one of the newly built houses while waiting for my home to be reconstructed, a daunting reminder of the ordeal and a proof of the resilience in standing firm. The HOA at my mom's townhouse sucks. So my mom lives in a townhouse complex. HOA there charges I think $500 a month. They are completely worthless. All they do is cut the grass and put straw on grass that never grows, cause they plant at the wrong time of year. We used to have tall trees in the back of some of the units. Yeah, they were a lightning risk, but instead of trimming them they chopped them down, and now we have no privacy. It was also nice for when I stay there because they blocked the morning sun. The sun now shines directly in my eyes, which wakes me up sometimes. There was this concrete slab that stuck up a little bit above the rest, right in front of an elderly couple's house. I tripped and fell twice. I'm young and just shook it off. But the 70-year-old couple that lives there wouldn't be able to do that. It remained like that for five years before they fixed it. Probably got sued. I'm not sure. They're responsible for the safety of the sidewalks.
On the topic of sidewalks, most of them are covered in grime, and when it rains, they're very slippery. Again, a safety risk that a simple power washing will fix. Despite them being responsible, some residents have power washed theirs out of pocket. They're also responsible for the roads, and they installed speed bumps. They're easily avoidable in some places and are just unpleasant to drive over. The roads are also filled the potholes they won't fix. They removed the second dumpster, so now 30 units have to share one. The one dumpster is on the other side of the road of the front units, which makes it difficult for older people to take their trash out. The old one was in the middle. The dumpster is almost always completely full with a couple days until pickup. My mom actually works for the garbage company that supplies them, and she found out the HOA removed that bin because they couldn't afford it. Where is the $500 a month going? I'll explain where it likely goes at the end. There was a big yellow jacket nest in some bushes directly in front of my mom's house. It's technically her responsibility, but she's scared of yellow jackets after being chased by them on the lawnmower at my childhood home. They eventually cut back the bushes and removed it after a year of complaints from my mom and her neighbors. The only good things they've done in the 15 years she's lived there is cut the grass and replace the roof. The old HOA manager was corrupt and suspected of stealing HOA funds for himself. I suggested my mom report him to the police. She's a board member now, but they never did. He's no longer the HOA manager. In short, FHOAs. Election tonight, gritty my teeth. I don't even know what I want to say. HOA election. Really just the vote count is tonight, and I'm running against four incumbents. My HOA started a fight with me over my pollinator garden three years ago. Long story short, I ran for the HOA board, but only got about 70% of the votes I need. Spent the last two years trying to create a state law to protect conservation landscaping, similar to the recent MD law, in Maine and Colorado and California, and Texas and Florida, and you're keeping track, and wasn't successful, but we're hopeful for VAGA 2025. Also spent the last two years on the PTA and in our HOA's ARB, both raising awareness of my name and helping to make changes to the neighborhood mentality and to the HOA guidelines from within. Not looking forward to listening to the current president read off the election results and gloating over his victory and my loss again. There is so much more to this story, but it's too long. Four spots up for election and five candidates. Never mind that last year they had three openings with no candidates and no one from the board or management told me that they needed people. Never mentioned anywhere that they didn't have candidates. They chose to hold appointments instead. I'm trying not to suspect malicious intent about it, but I definitely suspect that was on purpose to keep me from running unopposed. Stuck here for now, due to home prices, kids in schools, etc. Anyway, I'm trying not to be an angry, bitter person, but it's hard. Wish me luck, you all. I don't even want to be on the board with these grumpy jerks, but I also don't want to be harassed and forced to poison my yard and watch them stop people from having solar panels and whatever other BS they decide is important. Update, didn't win. President is passing off two of my campaign ideas as his own. Back to the grind? Ugh. HOA wants to tow street parking, but lets residents take all the guest spaces. So basically my HOA is notorious for being useless and petty, seems like most HOA. I live in a townhouse community in a Florida. The way the neighborhood is designed is that it's a big oval with mini cul-de-sacs, like six to eight houses in each. There are no driveways. Each house has two spaces, a garage and one space or two parking spaces, and there are also guest spaces available. Problem is, there is never any guest spaces open after 5 p.m. This is because the neighbors hoard all the spaces. There are even neighbors that leave their spaces open and take guest spaces just so they always have a spot open for guests, even when they don't have guests for days. One old couple has three cars that they park in three separate guest spaces while leaving their two spaces open. On top of that, the neighbors try to argue with you if you take the guest spaces in their cul-de-sac like they own it, which they don't.
Does the HOA try to stop this? Nope. They even have a rule that you can leave a car in a guest space for 14 days, which they changed from previous three days. And if you change the car to a different space, it resets the timer. Now here's the fun part. They also won't allow you to street park on the curve or in front of your own house. And they call towing to enforce it. Even though there are houses like mine, where if you park in front of the house, it does not block traffic at all. My house entryway sticks out a few feet from my house. Meaning if a car is parked in front, it only really sticks out a small amount into any actual usable asphalt. None of my cul-de-sac neighbors care if we have a car there. The person who comes over comes after 5 p.m. and leaves in the middle of the night. So no car is parked there during business hours when people might be doing maintenance. Does it matter that my neighbors don't care and that the car doesn't bother anything? Nope. You can't park there because it makes some old lady on an HOA board mad. Will they do anything to get residents to stop hoarding the guest spaces? Nope. Did we have to pay off a tow truck driver in the middle of the night? Yes. Our deed doesn't say HOA, however, HOA documents say all plots of land. They are now threatening legal action. A second attorney recommended someone else to litigate this. Gave him a call. He told us that the deed is not the end all be all and that the title search only goes back 30 years. Turns out it doesn't have to be listed there and that the restrictions and covenants of the Property Owners Association can implicate our plat and that is valid. I went digging through all of that, and our plot is listed in their original plat map. It appears that it not being listed was a mistake, and or no one has ever questioned it before. I am sorry if I sound uneducated in all of this, but I didn't go to law school or real estate school and am just doing my best to understand it. I don't know how three professionals missed this. I now kind of feel like we pissed them off for no reason. We bought a house in North Carolina last April in an older community. Ours was one of the first houses built, and the deed lists three very manageable restrictions, but doesn't state it's part of an HOA upon our property purchase. Our closing attorney advised against formal membership in the Property Owners Association, citing that it wasn't a requirement based on the original deed. Subsequently, after a visit from a member of the Architectural Committee, where concerns were raised about a small enclosure we built, we sought legal counsel from an attorney specializing in Property Owners Association, HOA Matters. Her deed research confirmed that joining the Property Owners Association wasn't mandatory and strongly advised against it. She also advised that we could move forward into a cause of action for slander of title or wrongful interference with property rights. After we continued to hold our ground, the HOA president threatened a lien on our property. We consulted our title insurance provider, who reaffirmed for the third time their commitment to representing us in any deed-related disputes. They assured us that they would not only represent us in any disputes concerning the deed, but that they would not have any issue resolving the matter in our favor. Despite our decision not to formally join the Property Owners Association, we're committed to supporting the community. We've offered to contribute the equivalent of HOA dues annually as a gesture of goodwill acknowledging the importance of community upkeep with acknowledgement that it does not constitute membership. We have reservations about certain outdated restrictions outlined in the community covenants, particularly those granting excessive authority to the HOA and potentially infringing on our property rights. They are now threatening legal action. One concern we have is that we are a same-sex couple in a very conservative area, and the authority to come into our home without our permission scares us. I would like to thank you for watching the video to the end. To encourage us to make more videos, please like, subscribe, comment, as well as share. Check out this other video if you haven't already.